In this video, we'll be going over the anterior rehab of six anterior teeth with the 3.8 software. We'll be using the overlay from Dental Cat products. Here's the image catalog, and you can see that we have the full arches, maxillary mandibular. We use a product called Liquid Reference, which you can see to define dots on the buckle bite images. Liquid Reference is a aid to help with the stitching in a buckle bite really makes it nice, streamlined, and quick. Please note that whenever you see the busy symbol on the screen, don't rush the step. The software gets unstable if you try to hurry it along, especially since we're designing the two central first before the other restorations. The only way we're able to design the centrals first is by use of the overlay to give us predictable proportions and size. We start to design with the centrals because that's the way that we've been taught to do our full denture designs and our smile makeovers. Here's the step with doing a buckle bite. Liquid reference makes this super easy and super fast. We get a great relationship from the upper and lower teeth. After we're happy with our articulation, we will hit the green arrow and move forward. At the trim preparation stage, I would like you to go and highlight correct optical impressions. You will then attempt to hit the antagonist button and see if you can pull up the antagonist model. In some instances, it will go directly back to the preparation model, in which I would like you to draw a straight horizontal line. Once you double click that, it's going to say it's an operation that cannot be completed. It will then give you the selection screen again in which you highlight antagonist. This time when you hit antagonist, you should be able to get the solid antagonist model to come up. Highlight cut inside. And we will go and now take our antagonist model, rotate it so we see the facial view. And with the use of the overlay, we will then define our horizontal line, our occlusion line. Using the correct optical impression, the superior line will be parallel with the horizontal lines of the overlay. We will then encircle the base of the mandibular antagonist model double click that and allow the software to trim the model. Do not rush this step. If you see the busy symbol on the screen, allow the software to do its job. After the operation is complete, if we rotate it to the facial aspect, you will see how we have a nice flat plane as a base for the mandibular model. The next step is to orient the antagonist model so it lines up with the incisal plane of the maxillary teeth. We position the antagonist model so we're happy with the occlusal plane and the midline. Now we will go through and cut a keyhole in the midline. This keyhole will allow us to reproducibly position the overlay to get a consistent result, a better result with our proposals. Once we're happy with the correct optical impression, we green arrow. It will ask us to trim the preparation. We green arrow there. And then we, it will ask us to trim the antagonist. We green arrow to that we can get down to designing our restoration. We will go through the margination steps, complete a nice margin on well-defined margins.
we will be asked to correct the insertion angle. We want to make sure that we tilt our model so we're looking down along the axis of the tooth. We'll help the biogeneric software give us a proposal that lines up quite well with the uh, plans of the operator. The software will then try to fit a biogeneric crown into the preparation that we gave it. It does a pretty good job at getting into the arch form and the general appearance of the teeth. It takes a little bit longer since we were dealing with number eight and we had prepared teeth on either side. But you allow it to go through its steps and it does a decent job. Once the software has given us our biogeneric proposal, we will rotate the virtual model and align it with the lines on the anterior overlay. Clicky, you can see how it has a distal tilt, which is an unnatural tilt. We want all the anterior teeth pointing towards the core of the body. We want the buckle aspects of the cuspids to line up with the outermost lines on the overlay. We will click so the antagonist is visible. We will line up our virtual models. We will then mark the overlay, mark the keyhole. This will allow us to quickly reproducibly place the virtual model on the overlay. I usually define the buckle aspects of the premolars, there are again other clues to help us with consistent resetting of the overlay. If you look at this, going from the triangles, one triangle to the other will give us the inclination, the anteriors, and the central has that distal inclination as mentioned before. By using the rotate tool, we can rotate measurely and correct that quite easily. By using the other tools available to us, and you can use your preferred tool, um, form plus form minus smooth are, are the big ones for me. We finalize our proposal. We then go to mill preview. Once we're in mill preview, we will hit quadrant function to virtually seat the restoration and open up a new CEREC program. With doing the two centrals, the quadrant function doesn't work special. You do the normal steps, pick out the restoration that you want to do. In this case, we're pulling crown, buckle scan, number nine. Number eight is virtually seated. The normal steps are followed. The second CEREC program will open up with number eight, which we can then send to the milling chamber. The nice thing that you see now is that when you do your virtual seed and open up the second, you hit antagonist. All the changes that we made to our antagonist model in the first steps are there for the subsequent restoration.